So good morning. I, I will present you this uh, work I have been done for uh, dealing with this uh, log Gaussian Cox process models using our INLA. So I will do for you uh, like a ease, I think easy to understand it, uh, introduction by a simple example. And then I go to this uh, more complex space time case. Uh, so let's start with uh, some data we have from uh, this uh, Splunk's package. Uh, there are more informations, but here I'm only showing you the time when uh, cases were happening uh, over uh, 16 years. So you have like the first cases right here, second, third, and so on. So you have recorded the time for each case. And what we want to do is like uh, to uh, identify or to fit an intensive, intensive function, lambda t, which describes uh, how likely is a case to happen at each time t, right? So I, I know that, for example, here uh, has less, less cases, here has more, and so on. So I would like to have some curve like this one. Uh, which is the intensity function in, in red here. And then we have this 95% uh, credibility int interval. So what's this uh, function is, uh, well, for example, if you integrate from zero to five, this function, uh, look that it's very easy here, this, this example, zero to five and, and zero to 10. If it was a box, we will have like, 50 case, but it's more or less half of a box. So we expected something like around uh, 25 cases during the first five years here. This is what is the intensity function. And uh, when we compare, for example, with the fitted model uh, with the number of cases before five years, we have 27 cases and the predicted says 24, so around 25. For the total time period, we have more or less the same uh, expected and observed number of cases. So this is kind of a way to look if the model is doing well. And I show you here like a simple case when it's only one dimensional and it's more easy to understand what is, what is going on and what you need to, to fit, right? Uh, so based on the data set, we need to try to model and fit that curve, right? So what we have is just like n events and we have recorded as observed time points, T1, T2, up to T, Tn. So we have only, let's say, one variable. A very uh, descriptive approach or a very, uh, the first approach may, enough anyone here in this room may do is like a kernel density estimation. Another approach is to aggregate this data into like grid cells, let's say monthly or quarters, and then you model the, the counts in each grid cell, the number of cases in each grid cell as like a Poisson regression, uh, for example, a GLM, but you need uh, some kind of uh, spline function for for fitting this curve or a random effect. So, but in this case, you are doing some kind of discretization in your data, right? Because you aggregate in small grids, you no longer have the exact time where when the event happened. And uh, the, the, the idea here in our approach is to use a, a point process uh, approach. So we have the data as it is, and uh, we don't have any kind of aggregation. But what is this uh, point pro process approach? There is uh, some um, uh, function or some likelihood function for this model, kind of model, where you have the likelihood, the log likelihood function given the data is like the size of the, the domain minus log the integral all over, over your domain of the intensity function plus the sum of the log of the intensity function I've, I've evaluated at each time location. In this way, you have 
uh, the, the intensity function evaluate at each time location, so no discretization here, but the point, the hard point in this problem is how I compute the, this integral. In one dimensional, it may be not uh, so difficult. Just place, let's say, 100 grid points and then do some integral approach. Uh, so by, in this paper by Daniel Simpson and others, they propose to approximate this integral by using a set of uh, integration points. In this case, it's like T1 up to Tm, so M integration points with these weights. If the, the, the grid is, in this case, equally spaced, we have a, a equal weights. And uh, another is, uh, the point here is that we can assume that uh, the intensity function follows, or the log of the intensity function follows a Gaussian process. So now another word came in here, which is this Gaussian process. Uh, so if we have that, the log of this uh, uh, intensity function now is uh, non-observable and is latent, so is we now have a latent Gaussian modus. Uh, why I'm happy about that? Because there is some way of doing fast computations for this kind of problems. Let's see. Why is good to have a Gaussian process? Because uh, let's start with this uh, Matern 1D uh, Gaussian process. It, this uh, Gaussian process has three parameters. One is the marginal variance, how, how it varies. It's in this, uh, all those graphs, I have it set as one. So uh, all those curves has uh, uh, marginal variance equals one. The other two parameters I'm showing you here in these plots, like uh, the, the, the smoothness, I have less smoothness process here, which is, is like very noisy, but still uh, some continuous path on, on this realization here. I have three realizations, the black, red, and blue realization. And uh, I can change the, the smoothness parameter to have a more smooth process, right? So I have different kind of process uh, under this uh, matern field. And I can also change the range of the process. For example, uh, to the next column here, I have this same smoothness process uh, on the blue. They are drawn from the sample, same uh, set seed. So we have a, here a, a process that varies, takes more time to vary over, over, over the, the range of possibilities. So we have here range equals one, so it varies more. And here we have range equals four, so it takes more time to vary. It's good to, to think about this thing because I, I would like to, to estimate from the process parameters like this one. Well, how is this uh, range? If I have, let's say, two kind of diseases, I, or I can compare uh, the disease uh, uh, dynamics by looking for this uh, range parameters, for example. Um, but then we need to do some uh, computations. I have a model, for example, uh, in the Bayesian hierarchical uh, framework, we have Y given the latent uh, field and theta, because you may or may not have an extra parameter uh, in the likelihood. We have uh, available several kind of distributions, like more than 100 distributions for, for this level. The next level, we are restricting ourselves with the Gaussian process because they are easier to compute with. So we have in the, in the latent part as a Gaussian. And the next uh, level, we have the priors for the parameters in the process. For example, prior for the range, for prior for the uh, marginal variances and other parameters. And um, one key point here is that some of this Gaussian process may have uh, the uh, Markovian property. So if, if the, this is the case, and most, there are several processes that follow this, this uh, Markov property. So instead of doing computations using uh, covariances, we can uh, use the precision matrix. 
because the precision makes for uh, sparse or is sparse for a Markovian process. And then we can use the integrated La nested Laplace approximations, which gives deals with uh, clever algorithms for fast computations. And it's, uh, we can do it analytically. We don't need to do MCMC. Um, well, this was the first example. And I can code it direct in Inla. Uh, let it takes, let's say, 20 lines of code. But there is this new package, um, which is Inla Brew. I can do, I can fit that curve I show you before with this code here. So what I need is like the data is just one column with the, here I, uh, the T is daily. So I'm dividing by the size of the year. So we have uh, one column, which is the time points. And then we have this set of knots that I need to place over the domain to fit that curve. And here is the PC, uh, prior for the maternal random field. Uh, and then we have some parameters like uh, the marginal variance and the range. So I would like to set prior knowledge on this and then have back uh, the posterior. Uh, well, one line for fitting the model given that I have already set some stuff before. Um, how about the spatial temporal case? Um, how many minutes? We have uh, uh, this interesting case here. I have a move, but I think I have no time to show the move. Uh, where we have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, several cases of uh, Fox rapes cases. The dots are very tiny here, so maybe you don't see it. But uh, over different uh, consecutive uh, months, we have a variation on this uh, field. So now we have a spatial uh, component and time. Uh, and how about, how can I do, because now we have three dimensions, right? Before it was kind of easy, we only have one dimension. Well, we, we needed to place over space a set of uh, integration points to, uh, to do the integration as I show you in the, in the one dimensional example. And uh, when we have this spatial temporal process uh, now, we need to set uh, a model for, for this, a Gaussian model because uh, we, we know Gaussian properties, properties from the Gaussian model. So let's do like, a, the, there is two approaches. One is using the model from time and the model for, from space and combine it using Kronecker product models. And the other is uh, set uh, non-separable uh, space-time model. And we need also code for, for to, do, to do that. Uh, over space, usually we have a, a, like a, a triangulated domain which is the, we call it mesh. So we have triangles and around each point on these triangles, we have the uh, dual of the triangles. And uh, so the, the size of these uh, polygons is the size or the weight for the integration uh, I show you before. So you, you, have, you need these two ingredients over space for dealing with the, the integral. And uh, for the model part, uh, let's consider this um, stochastic integrated heat equation uh, I, I have been working with. And uh, why it's good? Uh, it's, it are, it's from physics, right? So there are some permits. But the good point here is that it allows to compute with uh, a sparse precision matrix. So this is a huge benefit. And uh, we... Uh, can also uh, use Inla uh, uh, for implementing this model. Uh, it's not uh, uh, like a default model there, but you can use uh, our generic model to implement this our generic uh, framework. And uh, there is also this new library, Pardiso, which deals with uh, uh, very fast parallel decomposition of uh, sparse precision matrix. So, uh, and then, for that uh, data set, I have this pre preliminary result. Uh, so we have uh, uh, five g regions on that spatial domain. So I'm computing here the expected and observed number of cases uh, to see if the model is doing well. And it seems that it is doing well. 
right? Because the dots are the observed numbers and this curve is the expected uh, number of cases over. Here I have uh, summarized it over time and I have uh, also some kind of summarize it over space because I have five big regions. And uh, what's going on now is uh, the code is, is there uh, and uh, we need to wrap it in, into a function to, to make it uh, uh, easy for the users. And uh, another point here is that the, the parameters on, on the heat equation, they are not used to interpret. So we are doing some work with uh, my colleague uh, to do this uh, 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 interpretable uh, parameterization. Okay, that's it. Okay, we have time for one, maybe two questions. Okay, if nobody has questions, then I have one. <laughs> Sorry about this. So, you mentioned one of the big advantages of reformulating the state space process as you did is you can use Gaussian processes to yeah. fit it. Say, it's much faster. Could you give an idea about how much faster is much faster? Yeah, but, uh, well, the Gaussian process itself, if you work in, in covariance matrix, is actually not fast because it's like scales uh, in this cube. Yep. But the, f the point I ma I'm making here is to use a, a, a kind of uh, a subset of the Gaussian process, which are the Markovian ones. So when you do a Gaussian process, which is Markovian, then you can uh, use a fast computations. So you need this kind of restriction. 